our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. Perfect weather conditions for Dutch surfing teacher and sports journalist Bert Romani. And I always like to be have a sport to doing with the, the power of nature. So when windsurfing came up in the 70s, I was one of the first windsurfers in the Netherlands. Bert's outdoors windsurfing every three days. He follows the weather forecast religiously. First you have to know is the weather conditions. It's a sport totally depending on the wind. So the, the wind prediction and the chance of a strong wind, that's number one. The all-important forecast. It's been a topic of conversation since time began. Weather describes the state of the troposphere. This is the lower part of the atmosphere. The German Weather Service is one of the supercomputers in Europe that calculates the forecast for up to seven days. Here in Frankfurt, the computer's data comes from the ground, sea and space. We take everything we can get for our models, anything of high quality. For example, at worldwide weather stations, international forecasters cooperate very closely together. We also use data from cargo vessels, buoys on the oceans, aeroplanes and weather balloons and of course weather satellites. It wasn't until the invention of the telegraph in the early 19th century that meteorologists could share data to try and make predictions. The first European weather satellite, Meteosat-1, went into orbit in 1977. Since then, the accuracy of predicted temperatures has greatly improved. Clearly, satellite forecasting has brought everything significantly forward. There's no other way that we can get the large, large picture and the small-scale picture all at once. And despite people's beliefs, we are actually quite accurate. The first Meteosat of the enhanced second generation has been in orbit for around eight years. Developed by ESA and UMETSAT, it's still the best in the world. But researchers are now working on a future generation. The second generation was designed in the 90s. We're now going into the second decade of the, the thousand, 2000s, so uh, we have more we can offer. And obviously our, our, our users need more. Like, like with television, they need higher resolution. They, they, they want to make sure we, we get more accurate data to them and they want it more often. So there are lots more challenges to, to, to fulfill. Europe's satellite data comes from Darmstadt in Western Germany. At UMETSAT, it's received and transferred to the weather services. A day later, climate researchers can use that data for free. For the new satellite generations, negotiations have already taken place, but only sketches exist. Well, the next generation will have an improved spatial resolution, one kilometer, 500 meter compared to currently three kilometers. It will have some more channels to better identify aerosols. And we will have new systems on board which allow us to sound the uh, atmosphere for water vapor and for temperature. And we do observation of lightning from the geostationary orbit for the first time. Currently, UMETSAT operates two second-generation Meteosats in geostationary orbit. They're 36,000 kilometers above Earth. One sends a picture every 15 minutes of the visible part of the planet, the other every five minutes of Europe. In addition to these, there are two Meteosats of the first generation, as well as orbiting weather satellite METOP. But technology is about to make a major leap. We have to go to a completely new satellite bus. This is really a challenge for our organization. The current second generation is a spin-stabilized satellite. The disadvantage there is that doing one rotation, the instruments look only 5% of their time to the Earth and can take measurements. And with a three-axis stabilized satellite, we increase that time capable to observe the Earth. 
But this shift from a spinning satellite to one with three axes has disadvantages too. A spinning satellite is naturally very, very stable by the gyroscopic effect. Unfortunately, a three-axis satellite isn't. And on top of that, a spinning satellite naturally will uh, scan east-west, which, which is what we're doing, because of the spinning motion. We have to actually now do that through a mechanism and a very high-performance mechanism to achieve it. Another change with the third generation is that the satellites won't work by themselves, but in pairs. So we actually have a, two types of satellite. One has the imaging program, and the other one has the sounding program. Whereas the imager, you get good pictures, you, you can't tell what's happening through the atmosphere. With the infrared sounder, you can actually tell the different uh, cloud structures and, and content of the atmosphere at different levels. So hopefully, certainly by the end of this decade, we will have both up in orbit and we'll, we'll see whether this additional data does give us better weather. Well, <laughs> predict <laughs> the weather better. <laughs> Predictions are indeed becoming more and more reliable. These are vital for businesses from agriculture to emergency services to airlines and airports. It means they can plan better and more importantly, save money. Showers in the vicinity. Two, two, content, five. Met report, time, one, five, two. Weather me all has a high overcast cloud layer, light breeze out of the northwest. Temperature, 10 degrees. We have clients with very interesting problems. For example, we give advice to the German branch of a major Italian sweets manufacturer who make chocolates. They're having a break from deliveries during the summer. Because if it gets warmer than 27 degrees, the chocolate gets damaged. Today, three-day forecasts have a reliability of 90%. With the new MTG satellites, meteorologists hope to gain a fourth day with the same reliability. They also have other expectations. Precipitation is one very important uh, parameter we will tackle with the new system and we probably will go to an improved forecast of precipitation from currently, let me say, an hour to ten hours. We hope that with MTG we'll have better and more detailed information, especially from regions like the North Atlantic. Thanks to these satellites, predicting the weather could become even more accurate. But drawing the line between good and bad weather has always been a matter of personal taste.